Okay, lab 10 is a deceleration valve. It's a pretty cool thing. Let me tell you about an example about why we would want to decelerate or slow down a cylinder. Now, we learned in lab 9 that we want a cylinder to actually move really quickly, but that's so that we can, you know, if we're putting a mold together, okay, so these really expensive, two heavy parts that are really expensive, one stays here and a hydraulic ram moves this mold towards the other one. We want it to move it really quickly. But the problem is, if we move it quickly, it's going to hit like this. Bam! And those molds are really expensive. We don't want to do that. We don't want to damage our mold. So it would be nice if we had some kind of system where we could move really quickly and then just before we got there, we could slow it down really quite a bit so that it, it just kind of touched slowly. Another application for the same kind of deceleration would be, let's say we had a hydraulic ram with a drill on the end of it. So the drill is spinning, we kick it up to whatever speed it needs to, uh, it needs to spin at, and we have this, it's gotta go a certain distance, and we have an operation that's, you know, this is happening thousands of times, so we want it to go really quickly, but just before it gets to the surface where it needs to drill, we wanna slow it down like a lot, so that the drill hits that and slowly goes into whatever it's drilling. So there's another application for where we have a cylinder, we want it to move for most of its stroke, really quickly and then we want it to slow down. So what we do is we put a deceleration valve in. Let me show you that valve here on, on this circuit. So we've got a deceleration valve here during retraction. So there could be an example where we're actually pulling something apart really quickly and then just near the end we want to kind of slow down a little bit. In this case, what we're doing is as this the cylinder end is getting close to here, it activates my deceleration valve and it actually forces the liquid that's making this cylinder retract through a throttle valve. And that's internal. Let me show you here on this diagram. So essentially, just take a look at this. So if you can see that, you can see that internally, inside this valve, inside that dotted area there is the entire valve. And inside that dotted area is actually the throttle valve itself. It's inside there. So we don't need to hook up a throttle valve. It's already inside and it's all right here. So let's hook this guy up and we'll get this thing going and we're gonna study this moving and the way we're gonna study the flow here is we'll actually physically see it slow down but you can time, you can time how fast it takes to go out and then in retraction you can see that it retracts and it stops here and slows down quite a bit and we, we can actually control how much it slows down. Let's hook it up. So we're gonna look at this in two ways. We're gonna hook it up, we're gonna see this moving. Then we're gonna throw some metering in here. We're gonna meter out so we can slow the cylinder down in retraction and extension or maybe control the speed of it, but we'll still see that this thing is slowing down considerably when it gets to this point. Okay, let's hook this circuit up. Again, it's a standard circuit. I'm gonna start with this guy and hook my pressure up and I'm gonna hook this up and I'm gonna put in my tank. And my pressure gauge. Before I move forward, I'm going to check to see if I've got a drain anywhere in my circuit. So as I'm looking at my circuit here, I'm not actually seeing a drain. So do I need a drain? Actually, you do need a drain for this. For a deceleration valve, all deceleration valves have drains. And we're going to have to hook it up. Now, the reason you won't see it in your diagram is because in Automation Studio, doesn't have a deceleration valve with a drain on it. I don't know why, I kind of don't like that. But let's move forward and just remember you always have to hook up a drain for a deceleration valve. So I'm gonna do that first. Okay, good, so I'm gonna hook my drain up and you will see on the valve, again, I'm going to drain, I'm not going to tank. You will see on the valve that there's a symbol for the drain. So when we look on the actual schematic, we can see the drain is here, so that's the drain. Okay, good, so I got my drain hooked up. Now, I can continue on and hook up my circuit. Okay, good, so, I'm gonna start from here, my DCV, and I'm gonna move forward, but again, I'm gonna hook it up the way the fluid is going. So, the fluid goes in here, it comes out here, and then it's gonna go that way. So, I can hook it up like that. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna put that guy there, and I'm gonna go into my cylinder, but in this case, I'm going into the retraction of my cylinder, okay? 
Don't we have to slow this down during retraction? Yes, we do. But we're focusing on metering out, or more specifically, we're taking the fluid that's coming out of here and forcing that through a flow control valve, or this flow control valve, so the one inside here, so that we can slow our cylinder down during retraction. So let's continue on with the circuit. Okay, good. So from here, where am I going to go? Well, I'm going to take a look at this, and I'm going to say, oh, I've got a meter right there. So I'm going to hook this guy up here. And then out of there, I'm going to watch where I'm going. So out of here, I'm going to go to my flow control. Now the flow out of here is going to go through my flow meter. And I'm actually not going to hook up a check valve on my flow meter. And the reasoning is because there's actually a check valve in here that deals with the fluid going both ways. But when I want to study the fluid going through here, I put it in here. And when it flows here, I'm going to study this. It can flow back this way because there's a check valve in here. We just won't see it. So from here, I'm going to continue on, and I'm going to see, I've got a T here that goes to two places. One is my deceleration valve, and the other is back to a check valve. So I'm going to put this guy on here, and I'm going to get a line, put that into my deceleration valve. I'm going to look at the schematic of the deceleration valve to make sure that I hook it up to the right place. Okay, here we go. So I've got this guy going on here, and it's going to go into the in of the deceleration valve, okay? So my in over here, is here. It's on this side. Cool. So I'm going in there. Now, I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to go back to my DCB, but I don't want to forget about the other side of my check valve. So right here, I'm going to focus on this guy and go to my other side of my check valve. And then out of my check valve, I'm going to have another T. So I'm actually going to put the other T right on my check valve. Which side do I put it on? I'm going to put it on the arrow side, not the ball side. Okay. So this guy is going to go on the arrow side of my check valve. Now, I'm going to have this going into that side. Just to double check, yep, this line here is going into the ball side of my check valve. Sweet. Out of here, I'm going to the ball side of my check valve. Out of my check valve, I'm going to two places. One is going to be back to my DCV, and you can see the other one here is back to this guy, my deceleration valve. So I got my two hoses here. One's going back to my DCB. Actually, my deceleration valve, I think I'm going to hook that up first because I can use a short hose. I can see that. Good. And my other one, I'm going back to my DCB. I'm going to pause and make sure I've got all my connections, nothing's open, I'm looking at all my hoses and I can see them all here, so I've hooked that up. So let's fire it up. Can you make sure that's open? Okay, we're good. Fire that thing up. I'm going to kick this up to 500. I'm going to open this up all the way. And I'm just going to run this and see what happens. Okay, good. So I'm going to make it go out, and now I'm going to do retraction. Now, you can see it really didn't slow down there when it was getting to the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throttle it. So I'm going to extend this, and now I'm going to throttle this. I'm going to crank it right up, and then I'm going to turn it all the way, and then I'm going to back it off a little bit. Okay, good. So we'll try that. It didn't slow down that much, but I think it did slow down a little bit. Let's do a little bit more. Look at that. It slowed down considerably. It's moving really, really slowly. So that is really good. And, I mean, it could be that your application required that it move that slowly in retraction. But let's crank it up a little bit. Okay? So I'm going to release it a bit, and we'll see... There we go. So it's still moving really slowly. I can actually speed it up a little bit there. But let's say that's a good speed. Extension. Here we go with our retraction. It's going to hit there, and it's going to slow down. So you can see it's quite visible how much it can slow down. So what we want to do next is let's hook this up, and let's put some metering on here and some metering on here so we can control the extension and the retraction, but we can still see that our deceleration valve is still working. So let's hook 
took out part B, and what we're going to do is just adding the metering in here. We'll be able to watch the, the flow rates with the metering. More specifically, we're going to watch the flow rate coming out of here through my meter valve, and we're going to watch the flow rate depending on how I set my metering, we'll have a flow rate. And then when this guy becomes active, we'll see the flow rate go down considerably. And we'll be able to adjust this and watch how that affects this flow rate and that speed. Okay, let's make some changes here. Over here, when I'm looking at my circuit, I'm seeing I've got some metering on this side. So on this side is going in here. So I'm going to put metering in here. So I'm actually going to take this hose and just put it into a metering valve. So is it metering in or metering out? Well, in this case, it's metering out. So I'm going to not go into the ball side. I'm going into the tip side here. So if I take a look at that, I'm going to go in my tip side of my metering valve. Good. So I'm going to go to here. And now out of here, I'm going to go to my cylinder. So I think I can use one of these because that's not too long. It's just going from here to here. Good. Now, I also want to put metering out on this side as well. So I'm going to take this guy off to put him through a metering valve. Again, I want to make sure I get this on the right side. So this is, the flow is going to be going this way during the metering out. So I want this to have, this is coming out of my check valve. So which side is this connected to on my check valve? It looks like on the circuit, it's connected to the tip of the metering valve. And it is because I know that because, let me just put this on here. I know that because this is going to see that side of the check valve because I'm metering the flow coming out of here. So I'm going to use a short hose for that. I'm going to come out of here. I'm going to go in here. Now I'm going to just take my metering and release it. And I'm going to maybe just slow this down a little bit, and I'm going to run my circuit, and then I'm going to adjust my metering to make things move slowly, and we'll study the GPM. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to 500. Okay, good. So let's just see it move, and we'll see how, what kind of flow rate we have. Okay, during the extension, we're not studying the flow rate, but we're studying the flow rate during retraction, and here we go. So, we've got a 2 GPM for my flow rate during retraction, so I want to slow that down a little bit. I'm going to go over here, and first of all, I want to find out which of these is going to slow down during retraction, and we know that we're metering out. So, I'm going to say this guy is the one that's going to slow it down during retraction. So, I'm actually going to run this. And I'm going to run this at the same time. Here we go. So I'm going to crank it down. So I'm going to extend it again and turn it a little bit more. So that's moving pretty slowly. I think that's a good speed to study the metering going out. Now, going, pardon me, going in. Let's study the metering going out. I want to slow it down. I think that's probably pretty good. Turn that up a little bit more. Okay, now during extension, yeah, that's a good speed during extension. So I have a nice slow speed in extension and a nice slow speed during retraction. Now what I want to do is I want to change this. But let's just study our flow rates. Okay, so during retraction, I'm going to have a flow rate. I'm going to start from here. During retraction, I have a, a pretty low flow rate. I got a 1.2 flow rate. Okay, so, and now it did change when it got to the end because this guy is on. Let's watch that again. I'm going to come out a little bit. We know that I've got a 1.2 from here to there. Now, at this point, because this guy has throttled quite a bit, you'll see it go down. The cylinder will still move. I got 1.2 right now. There, see? It's still moving, but it's really, really low. So, what I want you to do is, just do this. I'm going to open this up maybe a little bit more until I get it maybe close to one, so it's not really doing anything. Okay, so it's slowing it down a little bit. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to extend it. Now I'm going to slow it down a little bit more when it comes here. I'm going to do a quarter turn, and I'm going to see the distance here. You can measure the timing as well. I'm going to go out again. I need to do another quarter turn or eighth of a turn. 
I will see this will slow down considerably. Now I'm going to extend it again. I'm going to do another quarter turn. And again, it will slow it down quite a bit. So there you go. Now you guys are experts at deceleration. And we're done. That is your last lap. So thank you for sticking with us for all of this time. And yes, you're welcome for the learning experience.